order here for Acme products, and I'm going to select a couple of items here. And we got some toasters we've been working with. Let's get one of those, and let's get a item that is a first expired, first out, like that ketchup mustard combo squeeze bottle. All right, we'll just get a couple of eaches there. Once again, I can put a note here if I wanted to, maybe no dust, you know, because Acme products just absolutely has a fit if their ketchup mustard combo squeeze bottles have dust on them. Put a little note to my warehouse guys there, and I'm going to click save and close. And that was sales order 66, I believe, there, if I remember correctly. But much like before, let's go ahead and just get that back open here. And uh, so we can keep an eye on it while we're doing stuff over in warehouse management. All right, you don't have to have this open. I'm going to repeat that once again, like I did with the purchase order. I've had that come up before. People think you have to have this open for the sink. You do not. It's only for my demo purposes that I'm leaving this open. Uh, more than likely, you would not have this open at any point in time after creating the sales order. All right, let's go back into warehouse management. Let's go to my picking icon because, yeah, I want to do a little picking here. It seems like a good place to go. So within the picking icon, we have quite a few different things you can do. First screen that pops up here is your find sales order screen. Uh, and if you want to find a sales order and start picking it, that's a great place to start. If you prefer to use the fulfillment worksheet, if that's something that you got used to over in QuickBooks and you like the way it works, you can do something very similar here as well. We have a shipments. Uh, button, which I'll talk about in a second. We also do counter sales from here, which is uh, designed as the way for the warehouse to create a, a sales receipt over in QuickBooks. So it, it's a counter sale. If you have a situation where you have a warehouse and you got a, a you know a door there that customers can walk in and, and pick some stuff up, maybe the guys uh, come in and he says, you know, I want to pick up some pipe and have you loaded in my truck for me. You know, the guy wipes his hands off from the warehouse, says, sure, no problem, and uh, needs to do a counter sale, and he can do that. We do the inventory portion of it here, and then it syncs over to QuickBooks for the financial portion over in the um, sales receipts, what it creates over in QuickBooks. And so you can do that. It's not a point-of-sale solution. It is not designed for high-volume retail environments. Uh, it is designed for a warehouse counter sale where you got an occasional guy walking in during the day, and you need to be able to accommodate that. Um, so that's a little explanation there. And then we also have the vendor returns here, which is a uh, vendor vendor credit over in QuickBooks, and it's a way to pick the product and get it back to the vendor. All right. So what we're going to do here is I'm just going to do a simple sales order. Here's the sales order that I needed to get, which was 66 Acme products, no dust. Once again, i got lots of different things I can use up here to help me find my sales order. Um, one thing that's nice is to be able to organize your sales orders by requested ship via. If it is 8 a.m. in the morning and my UPS priorities need to be out by 10 a.m. so they can get in their next day air uh, status going there, Maybe I want to pick those first before I pick the, uh, the Postal Service stuff. You know, So I'm going to go in. I'm going to organize my open sales orders. Say, show me all my UPS priority first, and hit search, and it's just going to bring up a list for me of UPS priority orders, which I'd only have one on my list right now, which um, I'm not going to bother clicking on that. You get the idea. Let's go ahead and click View here, and uh, View Sales Order 66. Now, this particular sales order has a couple of lines on it. I picked these two lines because one is just a regular old FIFO item. The other one's a FIFO. That way I can show you both at the same time. Once you're on here and you know that this is what you want to pick, you either create a pickless paper or you create a pickless mobile and send it to a mobile handheld. I'm going to create a pickless paper, and uh, we'll come back and do another one with the mobile handheld here. All right. And so now I'm going to do my pick process. All I need to do to get it going here is go ahead and click on the print pick list icon. There's a lot of different things you can do on this screen as far as options. You don't have to even do this one. But if you want a pick list for your guys, you want to print that particular pick list out, here it is. And that's telling them where they need to go to pick their particular item. For the toaster, they're going to go to A1A1 based off of FIFO rules, pick one. For the ketchup mustard combo, this is the stuff that's closest to expiring in our warehouse. We're sending them to D1B1, look for this lot number, and pick one. Pretty easy. All right, let's go ahead and close that out there. I don't actually need to print it. And then the next step would be to come down here. If I have a shipping system out there in the warehouse that's not putting the shipping information back on my invoice for me in QuickBooks, I probably want to come in here and click this. If it is putting the information back in QuickBooks automatically for me, I don't need to do this, and I'll probably skip this step altogether. But this allows me to capture the information that maybe WorldShip gave me and put it onto my invoice, and uh, I can do that automatically right from the warehouse. So now i got that information, and it'll be placed on the invoice on a new shipping line that I'll put on there. The next and final step would be to print out my packing list, and you can see that it has 
has not been printed. If I want one, I click this. If I don't, I don't click it. You know, and so once again, you know, think about this in your workflow. If you have situations where all this is done ahead of time, that guy with the sales, you know, with the warehouse in the trunk of his car, um, he probably doesn't need a packing list because he already delivered it to the customer. So you probably don't want to click on that. But this is going to be what's going. And you can see we also put the lot number in here for the customer as well, which is pretty important if you're dealing with lot or serial tracked items. People like to have that on the packing list. All right. At the end of uh, all that, I hit Create Invoice and send that back to QuickBooks with all the information to create the invoice over in QuickBooks. And so that is the picking process using paper. And so what I'm going to do now is let's just go ahead and zip back over into to QuickBooks here. And here's that sales order I was working on. We should get this thing updated in just a second here. It's going to show that my lines are going to be closed. Once again, I only have this open for demo purposes here. And I should get my invoiced um, notification as well. Then we'll view the invoice, and then we'll do another one of these using a uh, mobile barcode scanner. There we go. Invoiced in full and closed both lines. Obviously, if I hadn't picked both lines, I wouldn't have uh, two, two uh, check marks there, and it would not show invoiced in full. And the next thing I want to do is let's go ahead and go into uh, I'm sorry, go into my customer center here and, and take a look at the invoice that was just created. And here's my invoice. And it includes now my shipping information with my tracking number on it, and it added that $3 charge. 